Today I'd like to discuss a very important concept that is one of maintaining the anterior chamber volume during posterior polar cataract surgery. And I believe it's a very important step because it enables us to facilitate optimal outcomes whilst performing phacoemulsification in patients with posterior polar cataracts. Let's understand this concept further. So in order to achieve this, what we need to understand is that, that during each step of posterior polar cataract surgery, we make sure that we don't let the anterior chamber shallow. We maintain the anterior chamber volume consistently, which prevents unnecessary fluctuations in the posterior capsule, which thereby minimize the chances of having a posterior capsular rupture. Let's now watch the surgery, which will enable me explain this to you even further. Let's start with the incisions. Now when I create the main 2.8 mm tunnel or the paracentesis incisions, I make sure that I do not lose any aqueous during the step. Here, I'm able to maintain the chamber perfectly. The next step, which is the introduction of blue dye to stain the anterior capsule, should be done gently. Washing out of the blue dye should also be a gentle procedure. We then introduce some viscoelastic slowly to deepen and maintain the anterior chamber for the capsular rexes. I tend to perform my capsular rexes always through the main incision, but it's very important that whilst doing so, do not press on the posterior lip of the wound because that causes the visco to aggress out through one of the incisions and a resultant shallowing of the anterior chamber. Note how I do it, whereby I do not lose any viscoelastic whilst performing the capsular rexes. We now come to the hydro procedure. Now, traditionally, whenever we perform a hydro dissection, I always suggest that we do need to reduce the anterior chamber volume a little by pressing on the posterior lip of the main incision. That gives a little space for the hydrofluid to make its way around the nucleus without overpressurizing the capsular bag and thereby reducing the risk of a PC blowout. Now, even in patients with a posterior polar cataract, I perform a very slight decompression to make a little more room in the anterior chamber. The next step, as you can see, is the hydrodelineation. Having completed the hydrodelineation, we now introduce some viscoelastic to maintain the anterior chamber prior to the nucleus management. Let's now see the importance of maintaining the anterior chamber volume during the nucleus emulsification. As you can see, this is an extremely soft cataract and it is going to be emulsified in the epinucleus mode settings itself. The endonucleus is impaled with the phaco probe. It is brought up into the anterior chamber after which it is aspirated. The next step is of crucial importance. This is the step of the viscofluid exchange. The importance of this step is in understanding that when the source of fluid, in this case, the phaco probe is removed out of the eye, the chamber is going to shallow. So prior to removing the phaco probe from the eye, it is important to introduce the viscoelastic with the non-dominant hand. And once the entire anterior chamber is filled with viscoelastic, the phaco probe is then withdrawn from the eye. As a result of this, there has been no shallowing of the anterior chamber and an anterior displacement of the posterior capsule. The same principles are followed while performing a bimanual irrigation aspiration. While each time the irrigation has to be brought out of the eye, notice how the surgeon will then perform a viscofluid exchange prior to bringing the irrigation out of the eye. This is what you will see in this part of the surgery. Note how as the viscoelastic starts to fill the anterior chamber, the irrigation is turned off and then removed from the eye. The hands are now swapped and the aspiration is now introduced from the left sideboard. At the completion of the entire cortex removal, once more the aspiration cannula is removed, the viscoelastic is introduced into the anterior chamber, the irrigation turned off and both instruments removed from the eye. We now proceed with the IOL insertion. With adequate counter pressure afforded by a Sinsky hook held in the non-dominant hand, in a chamber well insufflated with viscoelastic with the prior viscofluid exchange, the IOL is now inserted with care and caution in the capsular bag. The excess viscoelastic is then removed with the help of a bimanual irrigation aspiration. No excessive movements of the IOL are performed because it is a patient with a polar cataract. 
Now let's see how we maintain the anterior chamber during the visco wash. Now following the completion of the visco wash, the aspiration cannula is removed from the eye as you can see and whilst maintaining the irrigation in the eye, the two incisions are hydrated. Upon the completion of the hydration, the source of irrigation is then finally removed from the eye and the paracentesis incision hydrated. In the manner just demonstrated, right from making the incisions up to the point of hydrating the last sideboard, the anterior chamber volume should always be consistently maintained. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you.